Hello and welcome to Wizards, Warriors and Words, a fantasy writing advice podcast. I'm Jed Hearn, author of Fires of the Dead, and I am joined by my fellow writers, starting with Dirk Ashton. Oh, hello. I am Dirk Ashton. I am not Michael R. Fletcher or Rob Hayes, no matter what anybody else says. And I wrote the Paternus Trilogy and all of their books. And speaking of Rob Hayes, we also have Rob J. Hayes with us. Hello, I'm Rob J. Hayes, author of I'll Go With Titan Hoppers, which may or may not be out at this point uh, in time. I don't know when this is going to go out, but hey, it's yeah, a it could be, science fantasy progression book, which is uh, kind of like Cradle or Iron Prince or Bastion meets uh, Warhammer 40,000 Space Hulk. So read it. Oh, <laughs> And Sexy. we actually have someone who wrote for Warhammer in the studio as well, which is Michael R. Fletcher. Yes. Greetings, it's me. So, uh, yeah, uh, stuff, things, nouns, verbs, the odd adverb. Ew, you use verbs? Oh, maybe verbs? not too many of those. Let's, let's keep Why? it easy on the adverbs, all right? Uh, yeah, don't yeah, freak yeah. me out like that, man. He said smugly. <laughs> 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 And uh, we are going to be probably digging into a couple of the, the nouns and verbs you have mentioned, because in this episode, we're going to be doing a blurb critique. So one of our patrons, uh, Daniel Henderson, has very kindly sent us the blurb for a book that he is working on called Shadows Assassin First Blade. Uh, it is a grimdark fantasy novel. And what I'm going to do is I will share the screen on here. So if you're watching on the YouTube feed, you'll be able to see the blurb. Uh, I'm also going to read it out so that people who are listening on the podcast feed can follow along as well let me get this and for up. the americans there will be subtitles for those who cannot understand <laughs> his thick australian largely thick incomprehensible accent, accent. Mate. um <laughs> all right shadows so. assassin first blade darkness and light vie for control <laughs> all right i'm actually going to read it out properly so that people can can get some context first so shadows assassin first blade Darkness and light vie for control in secret as the world moves away from the forgotten war that ravaged the world centuries ago. The magic is gone, or is it? 20 year old Valsh Tress, I don't know how to say that, Va- Valsh Tress grew up fighting for every day on the streets after waking up with no memory since the age of six. After fate determined he would have a different path, he stole from the wrong person, Phoenix, the deadliest assassin in the underworld. Thrust into a world where he. Thrust into a world he only heard whispered in dark corners, Valsh is about to become a member in one of the most powerful organizations outside of the four kingdoms that rule Alan, the Order of Assassins. But first, he must succeed in completing the Trials, a series of time tests designed to test his skills and mental fortitude. If he succeeds, the High Master of the Order already has plans for the young man. But Valsh has bigger concerns, a growing power inside him that the world tells him is pure evil. Valsh must hide in the darkness and wrestle with the light to stay alive. But can he complete the first task when everyone in the Order wants him dead? So, we're going to be going through and critiquing this as we have done on our previous critique episodes. Uh, We try not to hold back because that's not useful for helping you grow as a writer. So, apologies. If we're not holding back, can I just start by uh, asking Jed to say gone again? Which word? (laughs) Just say gone again. Gone. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds weird to me. <laughs> it has like okay. three syllables. <laughs> Surely three I don't know, syllables. You're dragging it out really like gone. <laughs> I guess I do, like, if you were to phonetically pronounce how an Australian says it, it would be G A W W N. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, so what do anyway, you think about this? To blurb? the blurb. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, so first, first thing, I mean, I'm assuming this blurb is like a uh, back of book copy slash Amazon description. description. Yeah. yeah. It's about four or five paragraphs too long. Agreed. Uh, it says way too much. It asks way too many questions. Um, personally, I, I is like, is, is the magic gone or is it? It's like, okay, obviously no, it's not. Um, because you just asked and you know, it, and, and you basically, it, details pretty much it looks like probably every important aspect of the story so you're not really leaving anything Mm. i mean it's not bad like it it looks cool and i'm like oh cool neat assassins you know underworld shit going on all very cool stuff uh but it's it's just it's too much 
That's a good yeah, point. I'm a we- I'm a fan I'm a fan personally of shorter blurbs of short blurbs, but I I do see a lot of really long ones where they put a lot of detail in there, and those books sell like a hundred of them a day. So I don't know personally. One, my big question is, um, is it true that there's a, the kingdoms that rule Allen? I mean, is there really a order of assassins called Allen? As, like Bob or mm. Michael? It does um, seem like a not very fantasy name, right? Like, I think if you put, no. if you put like a H in Alan there or has something, two L's. then it becomes yeah, but it say, Yeah, but it says Allen to me. I mean, yeah. its name is Allen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's let's fair. go talk to Could Alan. Steve. <laughs> I think I agree with Mike um, that this is too long, and maybe the first thing we should do, because what I would love to do in this episode is to actually go through and like do some edits in this document, just so that people can kind of like see what we are like actually envisaging for this. Um, yeah. So should we maybe try like to like? Gra- I mean, down all, overall, it looks like a great story. I mean, it looks like the kind of stuff that people mm. really, really love to read. You know, everybody yeah. likes yeah. assassin stuff. Every, you know, the whole idea of waking up without the memory. Um, it happens in, in a lot of books and people love it. Um, uh, kid, kid working, you know, growing up hard in the streets. You know, people love that stuff and magic. Um, so I get all of that out of it. Um, I, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of stuff that just it doesn't need to be like that entire first paragraph doesn't say anything. Um, you know, darkness and light vie for control in a secret in secret as the world moves away from the forgotten war that ravaged the world centuries ago. That's really long and it says nothing. Um, mm, the magic yeah. is gone, I, or is it? That's a hook one that should thing, be at the end. If you're going to use that, the magic yeah, is gone, or is it? That's the I hook agree. at the end. Yeah, what uh, what really twenty year old as well. Yes, I think in general, age references aren't that useful, especially because yeah. you've got 20-year-old and then age of six in the same sentence. So, like, pick one of those. Otherwise, it's very confusing to have both. So what we've got for the start, then, is Valstress grew up fighting for every day on the streets after waking up with no memory since the age of six. I, I still feel that second half of that sentence is, like, a little weird to me. Well, give me. I think, give I think me you one just start second. off with Vaus Tress grew up fighting for every day, every day on the streets. That should be a sentence. Yes. That should be your first sentence. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Or you could do after waking up with no memory since the age of six. Vaus it feels still Tress like a bit, I guess, long day. to me. Um, well, I don't I, understand I like, I like fight, fighting, fighting every day on the streets. Well, yeah, it's okay, just sort of like fighting for survival. Yeah. yeah. But instead of like after well, waking I up with just, no memory since I the age just of six, do, say something like he yeah, has no memory I of his past. Yeah. I don't think that's... Yeah, that's um, good. Yeah. But uh, does, that, does that kind of make sense? Because the way it's implying it is that he had no memory of his past and he was on the street and then he had to fight every day from that point on. Whereas... Yeah. yeah. Like, writing a blurb for a book you haven't read yeah, this is going to be really difficult. I mean, yeah, I've like, actually but, read the first ten times, like, like sentence book. structure so and stuff. I do but know really, a little yeah. bit of what happens in it. Um, I would just, I would just say, Vals Trash grew up fighting for his life or fighting something. I don't know because if, if fight, you say like, on, if you keep that on the streets, it, it gives that impact of okay, he's like, yeah, uh, it gives you yeah. the, this this feeling of like he's a street, street urchin, urchin sort of vibe. Well, and then mm. I'd just then go to then he stole from the wrong person. Get rid of the after fate determined he would have a different yeah. path. Um, yeah, say, say like- then he's then he stole from the wrong person. Phoenix, the deadless assassin. Suddenly you have my attention real quick. Um, after he stole from. Oh, yeah. then, uh, you know, you don't want the after. Yeah. yeah, then he stole. Then he stole from a deadly assassin. No. Well, no, I liked I liked what it said before. The wrong right, person. Then he stole. Then he stole from the wrong person. Deadly assassin. Blah blah blah. Go ahead. I mean, you you deleted the good part. Then he stole <laughs> from the wrong person. But yeah, you guys gotta be clear with the way, instructions. Yeah. This okay, way you so are starting this. with the main character, which is always a good way to to start. Because oh, you, there you, you still have it down there. 
yeah. with the readers and okay. the character. Do you have the name of the person he stole from? Yep, Phoenix. So we've Phoenix, got the person Vals, assassin, Vals the Tresk, oh, fighting yeah. every day in the streets. Then he stole from the yeah, wrong Phoenix. person. Phoenix, the deadliest assassin in the underworld. See, I like that. And then now he's thrust into a world only whispered in dark corners. Yeah. Yeah, so underworld and then world. Yes, uh, I was thinking that. Yeah. Just hitting the same two word. Yeah. Thrust into yeah. a society. I mean, you could have thrust into a life or... Yeah. Thrust into I'd, Actually, I'd dark. kill that. Vouches, start with Vouches about to become a member. Yeah, yeah. Let's or, do that. Yeah, that could work. Maybe. And I also like, there's a, there's a, is this a progression fantasy of sorts? Uh, I would Because it looks it like. It, so yeah, I read the first looks... couple of chapters of this, okay. and it seems similar to, if I had to give an analogy, it'd be kind of like a bit Blood Song-esque, where yeah. it's like a young okay. character who goes into this like ruthless fighting organization. Um, right. Yeah, that, that was okay, my so impression I, I... from the first. I would be tempted to keep the character. thrust into something because otherwise you're yeah, going to be same. starting yeah. with Vouch yeah. uh, twice, you know, in two paragraphs in a row. Agreed. So, um, but you could do something like um, thrust into one of the most powerful organizations, something along those lines. You, you don't, you don't need the sort of like into a world he yeah, only like heard that. whispered in dark corners. Mm-hmm. So let's say I mean uh, a lot of it is just is cutting out the, the bulk. Yeah. Thrust, thrust into it, the order of assassins. Eh? If you can't thrust, convince yeah. somebody to read Could your be. book in you know yeah. three short well, paragraphs, you're not gonna do it in six long ones. Cause then we can get rid of Alan. Thrust into How does this work? I mean we've got assassin and assassin. Maybe you just change yeah. that to killer yeah and then we say thrust, thrust into the deadly me. order of assassins he um uh-huh. Vouch succeed Vouch's only the trials. option to survive Vouch's only there we go we'll work this I out like later. that yeah, yeah okay so I'm gonna Just I know this succeed. is just a lot of typing yeah. for people listening on the podcast so I'll read this out that's fine. This is the next paragraph. Thrust into the deadly order of assassins. Voucher's only option, we'll work that out, to survive is to complete the trials, a series of time tests designed to test his skills and mental fortitude. We don't need time tests there. Um, uh, yeah. A series of complete tests designed to... A Oops. No, I, I like the trials. Yeah. Trials. How is that? Well, so we've got... Yeah, I like the trials. Mental fortitude. Yeah. Yes. Vouch's only way to survive, maybe. I liked, I liked that it was named The Trials. A s- yeah. Tests to... Um, just, you don't need a series of just completing The Trials. Yeah. And have it sort of like... Yeah, I feel like... Trials. Speech marks, uh, you know, quotation marks. Yeah, so trials. Tests, tests of his... Uh, a series of well, I don't know. I, I think it like does need something to explain tests. what the trials are. A series Personally. of tests of his well, something. Yeah, what do you guys think of this? So, reading out from the start again. Again, this is just for people listening on audio who can't <laughs> hear what's happening. Um, Vals Tress grew up fighting every day on the streets. Then he stole from the wrong person, Phoenix, the deadliest killer in the underworld. Thrust into the deadly order of assassins. Vouch's only way to survive is to complete the trials. A series of tests, a uh, series of, tr- wait, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> I've stuffed this up. <laughs> uh, how do we, how do we fix this? A series this? of tests um, for his skills and mental fortitude. A how about series a series, of, a series of deadly yeah, something. Dangerous or like. You've already, yeah, you've already, had already deadly, used deadly. So I'll just yeah. put it down. Dang- dangerous. Deadly dangerous. We already used deadliest. Dangerous. Mortal. What a series of say? mortal tests. Lethal. Yeah. That works. Because he almost, in the bit I read, he yeah. almost dies quite a few times. Um, okay. That's his only way to a series of lethal tests. 
and to and missions to gauge no, his of, to, of his to skills period. and mental fortitude or something. A series of lethal tests to to gauge to gauge his skills and well, mental no, just fortitude. Period after to... tests, he's got to pass a series of uh, lethal tests. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yep. Do we want tests and missions, or just like lethal missions? Like, no, what do we think, chess or missions? Punchy is better. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, get rid of if he succeeds for a start in the next paragraph. It doesn't say anything. Just the high master of the yeah. order already has plans for the young man. Is is fine. You don't need the if he succeeds. Yeah. Delete already as well. Do you think we even need? This sentence yeah. here, that if he succeeds, the high master of the order already has plans for the young man? Yes. Um, okay, it, why, why do you think it, that is? It, it, it extends the, the sort of like the story, what's going on. Um, it gives you this sort of like, there's a bit of mystery about it and, you know, oh, the mm. high master is interested in him, but why? Um, it asks mm-hmm. questions, whereas, you know, and, and has a bit of a hook. Um, and it, it helps to give the impression that the story is going to blossom out more than just, hey, Vouch is going to be an assassin. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that is a good point. I'm just thinking we need some sort of way to transition in because it feels weird to be like, Vouch's only way to survive is to complete the trials, a series of lethal tests. The High Master of the Order already has plans for the young man. It, it feels like a bit jarring there. Like, mm-hmm. I wonder whether we need something that's like, he quickly comes under the scrutiny of the High Master of the Order who has plans for the young man. I don't think that's the exact right way of doing it, but if do you guys think there needs to be some other way to sort of transition that? Mike's good at making uh, stuff up, even if it's not in the book. So, mm. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's one thing I learned too, actually from this, from this, uh, from, from in here is basically Mike talking about, you know, a blurb doesn't have to really tell the story. It just has to be really exciting. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, the whole point is to is, sell the book, like, not actually describe it. Yeah. It's the epitome of the, uh, the rule of cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, yep. Speaking of which, when it, for this, I would say the high master of the order, uh, yeah, get rid of already. And then has something planned, sinister plans or something. Um, mm-hmm. I just feel like, it needs more than just plans. It needs to be what about like that sinister? Even if yeah. he yeah. survives, I'm also has sinister plans. Sure. What do you think about that? Has no, sinister, sinister plans for the young man. Yep. But then you don't need a, a new paragraph. You can then just go straight into. But Vouch has bigger concerns or something. Mm. That doesn't need to be a new paragraph, basically. Yes, agreed. Um, so the next paragraph is, even if he survives, the high master of the order has sinister plans. Probably don't even need the sinister plans for him. But Vouch has bigger yeah. concerns. A power is growing inside him that the world tells him is pure evil. So we got two hymns in that sentence. So we need to That's change okay. that. Um, I don't mind that one. I think just the second half of that sentence can be snappier. So a power is growing inside him that he fears is pure evil, maybe? Well... It, obviously, it's something the world knows about, or that the world says is pure evil. The world, yeah, that's good. I like says actually. The world says decrees. The yeah. world Ooh, decrees. De- Love decrees. Has that or has world, decreed that the world decrees is. I'd say has decreed if you're going to use that. Should you maybe say like the world is terrified of that terrifies no. the world? No, I like how is growing evil inside bit. him that terrifies yeah. the world. Well, let's no. just put them together and we'll see how that looks. So I'll copy that one down. Um, power is growing inside him that terrifies. Okay, so two options. A power is growing inside him that terrifies the world. Or... A power is growing inside him that the world decrees is pure evil. Yeah, I'd kind say of has I, decreed. I pure evil one. Yeah. Me too. And I'd say has it, decreed. Do you guys like that? That the world... Because decrees means they see it and decree it right now, as opposed about, to it's something that... 
that the world says. Yeah, I think the point here is that like people aren't aware that the power is growing within him and it's just in the past it's been outlawed or that it's mm-hmm. led to horrible consequences. So a power is growing inside him. I also use something other than the world, but because the world doesn't actually, you know. The yeah, world what about like so everyone? Society. Um, yeah, something like society. What about like, or... I don't know, maybe this is wrong for the book, but like chuck in a prophecy there or something. Depends on, yeah, I don't know. Power is growing inside him that, because uh, yeah, if you say everyone actually, says uh, is pure evil. That a dark him, power know. is growing inside him. Yes. A dark power. Perfect, That's perfect. Good. Mike, I wonder why we keep you around sometimes and you've just proven your worth right there. <laughs> I thought it was because I was, I was so fucking pretty. <laughs> well, and that as well. that. I can't use mostly. That. A dark power is growing inside him. Uh, vows from us tied in the shadows. Okay, so what we got so far, just from the top, Vals Tress grew up fighting every day on the streets. Then he stole from the wrong person, Phoenix, the deadliest killer in the underworld. Thrust into... Oh, we've got deadly again. Um, Let me change that. Uh, You probably don't need deadly for Order of Assassins. That feels deadly enough. Um, Yeah. Thrust into the Order of Assassins, Vouch's only way to survive is to complete the trials, a series of lethal tests. Even if he survives, the High Master of the Order has sinister plans for him. But Vouch has bigger concerns. A dark power is growing inside him. Oh, we kind of got two sentences where it's him and him. Um, that's not a ma- major thing. Vouch must hide in the shadows and wrestle with the light to stay alive. But can he complete the first task when everyone in the order wants him dead? I like the everyone I in the just order wants him delete dead. Part. The in- mm-hmm. Nah, I, I delete the entire last paragraph. End it on a you dark reckon? power is growing inside him. Yep, it's a good punch. And uh, okay. like Rob said, there's some mystery there. Oh, Rob fucked off again. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering why he'd been so quiet because I can't see you guys at the moment. I'm just looking at the Word document. Okay, so let's, I'll have someone else different read this out. So uh, Mike, can you read this out in your nice, sexy audiobook narrator voice, please? All right. Uh, Shadow's Assassin, First Blade. Vouch Tress grew up fighting every day on the streets. Then he stole from the wrong person. Phoenix, the deadliest killer in the underworld. Thrust into the Order of Assassins, Valsh's only way to survive is to complete the trials, a series of lethal tests. Even if he survives, and I don't like the repetition of surviving and their couple of <laughs> hours, it's a little awkward. Yeah. The High Master of the Order has sinister plans for him. For him, probably also unnecessary. Uh, a bunch of extra words we don't need. But Valsh has good. bigger concerns. A dark power grows inside him so let's uh kill is growing just tighten tighten all that shit up yo what do you think about a dark power grows inside him on a new line uh it Confusing. doesn't really make sense because uh because it, he has bigger concerns and cool. that's his bigger concern right ignore so we'll yeah. put that back yeah i like this so Thanks for reading that out, Mike. So we, what we've got now is the current word count of this is 69 words. The original blurb was, any guesses? 197 Ten. words. So Four. <laughs> very wrong, Dirk. I'm sorry. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this, this could still probably be polished further. There, there's, yeah. yes. there's little bits that are like extraneous words and shit that aren't really needed. Um, uh, Valstrez grew up fighting every day on the streets until he stole from the wrong person. Phoenix, the deadliest mm. killer in the underworld. That would tighten that sentence. I like Trust that. into the order of assassins. Valsh's only chance at survival is compete, completing the trials, a series of lethal tests. Uh, even if he succeeds, the high master of the order has sinister plans. That's good. But Valsh has bigger concerns. Yeah. All right. There we go. That's how okay. I would do it. Nice. Yeah. I would, I would like to see something for, uh, for uh instead of just order of assassins um uh like Hello, not, Rob. not just secret but something yeah i think we could probably noodle away at this for like a few more hours but <laughs> for where we're at Weeks. i think this is 
an improvement. And I, I think if we're Much to try better. to like draw out some bigger lessons from this, it's that whatever you currently have with your blurb, just try to cut it as much as possible because that will really make you realize what is actually interesting and compelling about it. Um, what other kind of bigger principles would, would you guys add to, to kind of frame what we've just been doing in this episode? Yeah, like Dirk mentioned earlier, understand the point of the blurb. It is not to describe the book. It's not a synopsis. It is to sell. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to write something that's going to sell the book and a somewhat boring, rambling, um, you know, like multi-paragraph thing. Chances are that's not going to do it. You want to hit the emotion. You want to hit the feels. You want it big. You want action. And you want it really well written, really fucking tight so that people sort of uh, expect, you know, some sort of base level of prose from you once they actually get into it. Dirk, would you add anything to that? That's I, I totally agree with that, Mike. That's great advice. No. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, now, he may think that, you know, this is just too short and there are ways to embellish along the way a little bit. I kind of like a little em embellishing. Um, sometimes it can be too clean if short, but um, the uh, I, I think there should be something like like the word sinister for thrust into the sinister or order of assassins, you know. Some things, Jesus, just things to consider. Bowser's only way to survive is to complete the trials. Uh, a series of lethal tests, and you could put that, or a, a series of tests, or lethal tests that push him to his blah, blah limits or something. I mean, that stuff wouldn't be bad. Uh, if he succeeds, the high master of the order has, but Bowser has bigger concern, a dark grower power grows inside him um you know i wouldn't mind that um something has decreed as pure evil um but that's good the way it is too those are just options just different different things but yeah i think this is far superior to to what there was before yeah um, fantastic but, yeah uh, yeah um yeah, the other, the other thing I would add, and I always just say this whenever we do an episode about blurbs, is like the best, one of the best ways to get better at blurbs is to write down like on pen and paper the blurbs that you find very compelling for other people's books because it will make you understand the rhythms, it will make you understand the words they're using, it will make you kind of like just subconsciously get that seeping into your own mind. And then when it comes to writing your own blurbs, you have a much better understanding of how to structure them. So if you were listening to this and you're a writer and you're thinking about your own blurb, like it's great to think about it. Also do like a little practical action, a little exercise like this, and it will make your blurb writing a lot better. Um, and read it out loud to yourself in your best radio voice. Absolutely. And <laughs> see how it flows. Yes. Or if it all clicks or if you're like stumbling over words or sort of needing to take a breath before the sentence is over, those are bad signs. Yeah. <laughs> Which we, we noticed with this one, right? There were like quite a few times where I was stumbling or having to go back and do a sentence again. And yeah. uh, that could just be because I can't speak good, which is probably a factor, <laughs> but it's more likely because um, there was some like kind of convoluted phrasing and everything. So Daniel, thank you for um, sending your blurb through for us to critique. Really appreciate it. And best of luck writing uh, the rest of Shadows Assassin. Um, yes. And yeah, hopefully I read, like I said, I read the first 10,000 words of this or so, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it needs yeah. polishing in parts, but like for an early draft, I think it has a lot of promise. And uh, yeah, I think with hopefully this tight end blurb, it can hopefully go on to uh, be pretty good in whatever format you end up publishing it at. So yeah. best of luck, Daniel. Good luck. Um, yeah. yeah, we're rooting for you. You can do it. That's it. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened to Rob. He just sort of dropped out there. So, um, all right. We're going to wrap up this episode here. Uh, if you want to help support us on Patreon, like Daniel, um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash wizards warriors words. Link is also down below and that gets you access to bonus episodes. You can't get anywhere else along with a bunch of other cool content as well. Um, and yeah, let us know if you enjoy this kind of blurb critique thing and you would like your blurb to be critiqued, let us know. We might do more of these in the future. All right. 
See everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.